Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I think we've uh, got people sort of filing in now, um, so we can uh, make a start. So good evening and welcome to the Now Teach Career Change webinar. Uh, I'm Talia and I'm the Career Change Lead here at Now Teach. Um, and behind the scenes, we've got uh, Jo and she's doing our tech and keeping everything running really smoothly. And I also have Phoebe, who's our Career Change Specialist behind the scenes, and she's ready to answer uh, your questions as they come up in the Q&A. Uh, box. So we're part of the team here at Now Teach, um, and I'm really here. I'm really pleased to be here talking to all of you, and that we'll all hear from our guest speaker Warren, and he'll introduce himself properly in a few minutes. And also on the panel with me, I have Joseph, who is from the team here at Now Teach, um, who helps run our program, um, and he'll be here at the end to take questions on what it's like to be. Um, on Now Teach and how we're working hard to support career changes in what's a really big shift in their working lives. So um, at Now Teach, we're here to support you through the whole process. Um, so whether, um, you know, wherever it is that you are in the process, um, we've got lots of expertise on hand, um, both today and also in the coming weeks and months um, as you make a transition in your career and just make it as smooth and informed as possible. And also, we want to make sure we answer all of your burning questions, so do type them into the Zoom Q&A box. And to avoid confusion, this box labelled Q&A is not the box labelled chat. And our team are on hand to answer your questions. Um, we'll answer some of those in the Q&A box, and then we'll put some to you, myself and Warren and Joseph um, near the end. Um, we'd also really love to know a bit more about you and what you want to hear about. So if you could just complete the polls and um, that will pop up on your screen in just a second. Oh, that should be up now. And I'm just going to keep those polls up for about 20 seconds. Okay, so um, today's event is all about how Now Teach can, su can support you through your career change. And Now Teach, we really want to see a world where children are benefiting because talented people um, who've already had successful careers become teachers and can bring their skills and their experiences to the schools that need them most. So to do that, we attract and recruit experienced people to career change um, into teaching in state schools. And we support now teachers, training providers on schools and just the wider education system in general uh, to realize the full potential of career changes in education. We won't cover every aspect of this, but we do have an hour and we'll be able to tackle the key bits and delve a bit deeper um, into the process. Um, so there's no better way to learn about what it is to be an our teacher than to hear directly from the cohort themselves. So I spent 30 years as a marketer. I was a journalist and an author. I was an investment banker. I'd had a catering business for almost 30 years. I've had a military career and then worked in consulting and then I went into teaching. I really felt like, okay, I've got like 10, 15 years left of working. What should I do that makes me feel like I want to get out of bed every morning? I found the retirement decision was a difficult decision to make. I wanted to give back. I wanted a challenge. It's never too late to change careers. It's never too late to do something new. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. My husband said, oh, at last, because I'd been talking about it for years. People telling me, you're really courageous which I think in Britain is called for you're crazy. <laughs> the thing about us as career changers is you're bringing to the school environment a unique set of experiences that can only be valuable to their children. Everybody's starting from scratch. Every month you look back and feel, God, I've got a little bit better. The kids are hilarious. They really are very funny. I feel fully alive. I have purpose. It's the most rejuvenating thing I could possibly imagine doing. I can see the impact that I make on a day-to-day -day basis, knowing that I'm helping these kids prepare themselves for the future. So a real special thanks to the Now Teachers who gave up their time to make that film. And I'm sure you agree, it's just incredibly valuable to be able to hear from people in the network. So next, I also want to play you a message from one of our co-founders, Lucy Kellaway, 
Um, Lisa herself was a career changer and really understands the unique benefits and challenges of career changing. Hello, I'm Lucy Kellaway. I'm the co-founder of Now Teach. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you today. Really pleased that you are interested possibly in becoming a teacher. Uh, I set up this organization together with Katie Wargrave four years ago because I suspected that there were people maybe like you and definitely like me back then who were tired of their old careers and who wanted to do something more useful with their lives. Um, it seemed to me that there was this huge waste of talent of people who had lots of experience of the world in general and wanted to become teachers, but nobody was helping them. Nobody was saying, yes, you know, the pr profession needs people like us and here's how you do it. So that was four years ago. Uh, I am now, I have now been teaching myself for four years. Uh, look, it's been hard. Uh, everybody said to me at the time, this will be the hardest thing you've ever done. Uh, I didn't believe them, but my goodness, they were right. But it was also, you know, if I wanted to do something useful, which I did, nothing could be more useful than this. Every single day that you're a teacher, even on a bad day, you leave school knowing that children know something that they didn't know that very morning and that was because of the effort that you have made. So what could be more rewarding than that? Um, teaching isn't for everybody. Of course I know that. Um, and maybe you're wondering whether it's for you. Well, I mean, the only ultimate test is sort of try it and see, but I can give you a couple of pointers because obviously we don't want loads of people who are going to start doing it who then drop out. But I think there are two really important motivations and if you have both of them then this really might be right for you. The first one is that you yourself want to learn something new. You want to push yourself. You want the challenge of this. And that's a sort of selfish motivation but my goodness it will help you in the dark days in the January of your first year. But the other motivation is just as important. Um, you need to want to do this for the sake of your students. If you have both of those, this really might be for you. But there are a couple of extra things too. You will be surrounded by teenagers uh, all day long. If that doesn't excite you, then it's been very nice to meet you, but goodbye. Um, equally, you need to want to spend all day thinking about the subject that you're going to teach. You need to find it really interesting because if you're not interested in it neither will they be. Lots of other people will will, will talk to you um, as you go through this about what we can offer but but in the end we will help you find the right um, teacher training pro program for you and in the end we offer you each other. We all want to do the same thing, we all want to become better teachers and nothing makes me as co-founder happier than that you are out there watching this video thinking maybe teaching would be the right thing for you. I hope it really is and I hope to meet you one day. So as I mentioned previously that was Lucy and uh, she's one of our co-founders so thank you Lucy for taking the time to record that message and that leads us on really nicely because I now want to hand over to one of our brilliant cohort members Warren who's still right in the thick of teaching and I'm sure has some brilliant insights into what it's like to be part, part of Now Teach. So Warren uh, welcome and thank you for being here and I'm gonna let you take it from here now. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, so what am I supposed to start talking about? Um, an idea of my background, how I got here. So I did philosophy at LSE um, as a degree uh, a long time ago, 30 years ago, uh, because I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. Then I started doing um, management things. Um, uh, ran restaurants uh, and a video rental shop in Paris, as well as uh, pretending and trying to be an artist in Paris. Um, and 
kind of at the same time started doing video work and carried on doing filmmaking type things, had a film production company and eventually made a feature and did lots of music videos and silly things like that uh, for many years. Um, then uh, I had a daughter and realized how wonderful it was um, kind of helping her to grow and become what she could become and um, started doing uh, uh, getting involved in her primary school a bit uh, in her nursery they had a cooperative nursery that was all very lovely um, I kind of got interested in the pedagogy of uh, in general um, that all led on to, hey, let's see what schools are doing. So I started doing some teaching assistant work. Um, realized I was getting a lot of satisfaction out of that. Um, but couldn't be a TA forever, impossible to pay any bills. Um, so thought about, okay, can I actually become a teacher? Uh, started researching it did a, there was a lovely moment uh i was working in a pru a, a, a pupil referral unit and they were doing their gcse's uh, and they had the maths paper there um and i hadn't looked at a maths any kind of maths test for 25 years or 30 years a lot long time uh, but realized I kind of knew what I was doing and if with a little bit of practice uh, was going to be able to actually do the paper. So then I thought, well, maybe I can do this. Um, went to some events. Uh, I think I, I might have talked with some now teach people early on, but I don't think so. I think it was one of the TUC Center train to teach type uh, events. Those are all very useful. Definitely go to one of those. Lots of training providers um, all talking about how, what they're gonna give you. Um, yes, uh, and then just started training. I'll talk about the rest of my training in a bit. Uh, what else? Um, so, uh, training school in central London, Elm Green, uh, in Tulse Hill. Um, that was uh, okay. Um, it wasn't the worst behavior for central London as a school, um, but it wasn't the best. There were still dangerous moments and people fighting, um, but I never really felt at risk. Um, but there like some very, well, some experienced teachers still had problems and disrupted classes so yeah um what else um i did ect one so the first year once i was a qualified teacher um at the norwood school um which was a slightly um better cohort than elm green better intake uh but kind of similar um local school it had a drama specialization so i'm a maths teacher and that uh was low down on their priorities so that made it a bit uh difficult to get the kind of progress that we expected as a department and well as as the slt expected but other subjects were prioritized um and then i moved this year in september to brighton and got a job at a very good school luckily i got rejected from two or three schools uh that i if i given if, if i'd been given the choice i wouldn't have wanted to work in compared to the school that i actually got the job in eventually so that was great uh hold out for the school that you want to work in is a good uh, lesson there. Um, and it's all kind of going great, except I'm having to work full time. For the first two years, I was working four days out of five, and that suited my work life balance, uh, family commitments. Uh, still wanted to be there for my daughter, and it's been hard uh, to do that, even though my daughter's a bit older, so doesn't need me as much now. Um, but family's been supportive. Uh, 
they do have to be supportive. It's uh, tough to um, contribute much. Uh, early mornings, long days, hardest I've probably ever worked. If I ever retire or go back to doing any film stuff, um, I will be much harder working now that I've seen what I can actually do from what I've been forced to do as a teacher. Um, but they were happy that I was doing something that I felt was meaningful and making the world a better place. And um, yeah. Uh, now teach are awesome. Um, so the, I did have some really tough times in the first year. Everybody does. Like there's a, there's a kind of joke. I don't know. It, it's almost a cliche joke that you will cry at some stage. Uh, and like in the toilets or after school or after a bad lesson or whatever at some stage. And um, I did have people to talk to. And I, I luckily my mentor at the school was somebody who was uh, kind of okay. But um, it's really brilliant to have somebody who totally understands the whole training structure, but isn't part of anything that is judging you in any way. Uh, that's very valuable. You, you, although in most training structures and uh, in most schools, everyone is there to support you and wants you to succeed and wants the best from you. It's still difficult sometimes to talk about, to be totally honest about whatever weaknesses or struggles you're having and having that person there or structure people uh, there was amazing. Um, the network is also wonderful. Um, there were there were times when I'd go into a um, a kind of a, a lesson or a um, part of my training with my training provider, uh, National Maths and Physics uh, Skit was who I trained with. Um, when I felt totally on top of it and uh, had loads to contribute because of some of the webinars or course type things that I'd been doing with Now Teach. So that was awesome. Um, having a whole cohort of people who are going through exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. Uh, for some people who don't have the, um, uh, the group of people um, within their training, um, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Am I over time? No, you're all good. You're all good. <laughs> what, what else have I got? Uh, challenges overcome, learnt. Uh, I still have a slight, uh, I don't know. I have a, have a bit of a belief in mixed ability, problem solving, investigative approaches to maths. Um, that is incredibly rare in schools in the UK. And so I've had to get used to much more direct instruction. I've also learned that uh, direct instruction is the most effective way of doing a lot of, um, of making progress. And so that was one thing that kind of has shifted uh, quite a lot. Uh, I've also, uh, my instinct is to respond emotionally and to be totally honest in all situations. And that has had to uh, be tempered. Uh, let's say the most effective teacher is a calm, consistent, um, yeah, reliably behaving in a certain way person. Um, you've got to be warm, uh, but um, yes, that was something that I've had to mm, change with, be different. Um, okay, this is a good bit, inspiring bit. So uh, I, a girl was doing really well uh, in a lesson in, in my class. I um, recommended them to be moved to a higher set. Um, and so I wrote a letter saying, your daughter's gonna be moved to a higher set. I'm sorry to miss her, but that's the, uh, yeah, this is happening. Um, and this is the letter I got. Uh, 
Hi, Mr. Malone. That is such fantastic news. I was maths mad in school and went on to work as a Cisco network architect for 25 years, and it was all because I had a teacher like you. Olivia comes home from your class with a massive smile. Your attitude towards her learning is immense. Not very good English, but whatever. Uh, and she has thrived under your guidance and encouragement to do well and push herself. I am so proud of her. Thank you so much for giving her such a wonderful start. You are a brilliant teacher. Thanks again. A very happy mammy. Uh, I'm not a brilliant teacher. Uh, I have seen some brilliant teachers uh, and at times perhaps I can be uh, have been a good teacher but uh, it's great when people do think you're doing the right thing and you have that effect on people that really is making a difference I think. Um, it's also great when you get the heartfelt cheery hello Mr Malone's in the corridor. <laughs> There are dirty looks from people that I have given detentions to, but uh, they're usually um, balanced by plenty of hellos. Uh, that's all I've got at the moment. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> that's brilliant. So thank you, Warren, for sharing your story. It's so useful to hear uh, firsthand, um, just especially like someone, um, you know, just someone like yourself who's benefited um, from now teach support and you've also been able to thrive <clears throat> in the classroom um, as a teacher so that's brilliant. Um, so now you've heard from Warren I'm just going to speak to some of the more logistical things and the type of things now teach uh, will be able to support you with and then shortly after we'll delve into the Q&A part of the session meaning that we'll get to answer your questions um, but first there are some questions that always come up so I want to preempt these and ensure that you're getting all that crucial information up top. So uh, Warren, you can take a breather now um, and then you and Joseph will speak to some of the questions that are coming through. So everybody on this call today will be in a kind of slightly different point um, in your thinking. And we understand that you need a really bespoke approach um, to the support that you get. Um, and there are some questions though that everybody has in common. So first off, um, how do I become a teacher uh, with Now Teach? Um, so first of all, just a quick overview of how we can support you into teaching and now teach. So to reiterate, and I did notice this came up as a question, um, and hopefully um, this will give you a thorough answer. Um, we don't run a teacher training programme. Um, we support career changes as you transition to teaching and you remain part of, of now teach throughout your entire career as a teacher. So we do this in um, three ways. So first off, our career change specialists um, will support you with your initial teacher training application, whether that is advising on DFE apply service or helping you to secure interviews um, through our partners um, or even coaching on the interview process itself. Um, jo, Rachel, Wendy, Phoebe and the team are all really well equipped to support people who are changing career at that kind of mid to later stage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So secondly, once you've secured a teacher training place, our programme team will support you during your first two years. Um, that's your teacher training and your first year as a qualified teacher. Um, so Joseph, who, Joseph, who is with us today, is part of that team. And I know that he's going to be more than happy to speak to you what that looks like a bit later on. And thirdly, you also become part of the Now Teach network of hundreds of career changers. Um, and they share, you know, they are there and they share their learning and their experiences with UG Train and then for the rest of your career as a teacher. Um, so Joseph will agree, I'm sure, that now teachers say that this is one of the best aspects of what we do. Um, it's a community, it's a community of people who are doing or have done just what you're doing. So next question um, that we get quite a lot is exactly what the process um, looks like. So there's two parts, an eligibility check um, in our expression of interest form, and then you complete the full registration by submitting a statement about your motivation to teach and uh, your career so far. If it looks like we're the right fit to support you, we'll then invite you to a consultation um, and we'll talk a bit more about your motivations to teach um, and some, some key competencies as well. Um, there is a consultation outcome and if you're proceeding on to next steps, um, you will be invited to join Now Teach. Um, then we then support you in securing your training place with a training provider and then um, you are on to the start of your uh, training journey itself. 
So again, uh, another question that always comes up is what are the different training routes? Um, so this can seem a little bit daunting, a bit complicated, but at a very basic level, there are two main types of training program. So there's university or school-based. Um, with a university-based, you would begin in university setting and you'd have your lectures and seminars, and then you'll complete two block placements at schools. And then with a school-based, um, you would be in a school and you'd learn on the job from day one. Um, you may step out of school for sort of one day a week to a different learning environment, but you are based in one school for a majority of the year um, with some time in another school for contrast. And there are also, also two qualifications that are associated with teacher training. Um, so there's QTS, which is qualified teacher status. Um, so this is the qualification that you need, you require this to teach in a school in England, and that's the key thing. And a PGCE, um, which is kind of what a lot of people have already heard of, um, that's the academic qualification. You'll definitely get this from a university-based route. Um, you can get it from some school-based routes, but it's not compulsory. But the key things are that you can achieve QTS and become a teacher without having a PGCE. So our career training specialists will be more than happy to speak to you in more details about your options um, and also just how these options match up with your specific circumstances and just working out really what's best um, for you. Um, so next question we'd like to just cover a little bit of is am I eligible? So our expression of interest form does check your eligibility um, but just to highlight there are legal criteria for teacher training and you do have to meet these. So they are maths and English GCSE at C or above, um, and you have an option to take an exam if you um, don't have these. Um, an undergraduate honours degree and further criteria for subject eligibility is variable, and that's depending on your training provider. Um, but usually, you know, either an A-level degree or kind of significant relevant experience in your chosen subject area will be required. And if you have overseas qualifications, you can apply to a government, bod government body, and that's called ENIC, um, for a statement of comparability. And they'll just check how your overseas qualifications match up to ours in the UK. Um, so at this point, I'd also just like to add a quick note on um, subjects. So uh, what subjects can you teach? Um, so we support trainees across subjects, um, and but they're, where they're it does tend to be more initial teacher training uh, positions available. So our team can discuss with you which subject will be right, the right choice for you, and that'll be based on your experience and also your interests and your qualifications. There are shortages of teachers in particular subjects, uh, things like maths, physics, uh, chemistry, um, modern foreign languages, computer science, and there are often more training options in these subjects, and they do also attract a higher government bursary, which leads us on nicely to talk about uh, finances, which is a really big question for everyone. So um, if you just have a quick look at the table that's on there, and that'll give you some um, information on uh, the bursaries available. So, you know, change in career does mean a change of income for most people. Um, there are some government tax free bursaries available, um, and these do vary. The higher bursaries are, of course, understandably for those shortest subjects, and they're up to £27,000. So uh, subjects like maths, physics, chemistry and computing, um, they're bringing in the highest bursaries. Again, uh, when thinking about your skills, qualifications and experience, um, it'd be worth discussing this with your career change specialist um, just to see what's the best fit all around um, and, you know, what's going to be best for your lifestyle. Um, all trainees pay tuition fees uh, for their training year, and that's whether you're on a university or a school-based route. Um, there are student loans available, so £9,250, the equivalent of a year of university fees, um, plus maintenance loans uh, are available for living costs of £12,000, um, and these are dependent on household income. So once you gain your QTS, so after your first year, you do enter the teacher salary scale. As a newly qualified teacher, you begin on a salary of um, at least £25,000 outside of London. And inside of London, it's about £32,000. So um, that's that. So hopefully that's covered um, some of the basics and some of the things that you'll have been wondering about. Um, and that means that we can now uh, move on to 
the Q&A part of our um, information event. So um, I'm going to um, bring Joseph in um, and uh, Joseph, it'd be really nice actually if you could just uh, introduce yourself um, a bit first as we've already heard from Warren and just tell us a bit about um, what your role is at Now Teach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my name's Joseph. I am part of the programme team at Now Teach, so I'm one of the programme managers. Um, our role in the programme team is basically to support you from the point that you start teaching um, in September through to um, the end of your training and then beyond that as well. So we have a two year programme um, of tailored events and content and that kind of thing, which you will have access to um, usually through your training year and then through your first year as an early career teacher. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, we kind of continue to keep in touch with you as part of the Now Teach Network, make sure that you're still connected to other career changes uh, beyond those two years as well. Um, what that looks like, what that support looks like does vary a little depending on who you are and what you need. Uh, we try to be really responsive. Um, each of us has a portfolio of Now Teachers that we support, uh, generally kind of split along lines of training providers so that we um work more closely with them and have some familiarity over what your course looks like and um uh yeah and what what structure it's following and that kind of thing um but there are kind of a few key things that we do to support in the team so uh beyond our kind of core events offer um we'll check in with you at least once a term um just to see how everything's going to see if there's any additional support we can put in place uh, we can put you in touch with other people who might have been through similar challenges um, or maybe uh, have kind of explored other opportunities that you might be interested in exploring. So, for example, um, Warren mentioned that he was teaching four days a week up until this most recent job that he's done as well. So we do have quite a lot of people in the network who have uh negotiated different part-time or flexible options um in their ECT years so after they finish training and we can always connect you with people who have kind of managed to negotiate that to share their experience we have a network of close to 600 teachers now or we've supported close to 600 uh, career changes into teaching at this stage um so it's likely that any challenge you have or any interest you have is something that we have experienced in the team before so really that's the huge value in the network that you're joining um alongside that we also have a coaching offer we work with a couple of um careers and guidance coaches as well well-being coaches um and we can provide that service uh as well as that if there are any kind of um yeah, challenges with your school, challenges with your training provider. Not that there necessarily will be, but sometimes it's just nice to have a sounding board who's a third party who's not, um, you know, not directly involved in your training. And that's, again, where we can fit into that. Um, yeah, and I think that that covers most of what we really do in the programmes team. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. So um, I just wanted to add on to a couple of things you said there as well about uh, flexibilities, because we have had a question. Um, are you aware of any flexibility for training that allows for part time training in evenings and weekends? So um, I just wanted to chip in and say that um, because of the nature of what it is and, and it's teacher training, it's working in schools, um, you will have to have experience kind of in schools so that obviously takes place during school time um so that is flexibility but it won't extend to kind of evenings and weekends um you'd have to be able to be on placement in school and kind of school hours um but as Joseph spoke to you just then um things like part-time are an option and they are options for um teacher training also um so it's not just when you kind of become um a qualified teacher if there, there are kind of like part-time teacher training options and the best thing to do will be um to chat to someone um one of our career training specialists because they will be able to look in your area and we'll be able to see what the training routes are that are specific to your area um and 
they'll kind of know um, what the kind of landscape looks like around you um, and kind of be able to talk you through kind of the nuances of each option, just kind of work out if there's going to be a best fit for you as well. Um, so perfect. So um, somebody asked before as well, and I think it did actually get answered um, kind of online, but I thought it was a really interesting one to put to uh, Warren and Joseph. And I think it was about um, kind of refreshing knowledge. So um, Warren, it'd be really interesting to know if you did anything to kind of like refresh your knowledge before you started your training. Um, and if you didn't, if it's something you would recommend um, or you have any kind of tips on how to do that. OK, so definitely. Uh, do uh, <laughs> and uh, you can get paid for it so the subject knowledge enhancement courses once you have a training provider you can ask if they don't offer or negotiate with them or they will recommend anyway that you do a subject knowledge enhancement it can be up to 28 weeks I think a really long time at like 200 pounds uh, or so a week um, when I was doing it because it was COVID times, it was, I had the choice to do it all online. Um, now they might be um, face to face versions of that, uh, but there's probably online versions as well. So uh, it's great. You can um, often fit them around whatever your other commitments are at the time. Um, so that's, that's a definite. Um, before I started that, and after I did that, I was still uh, kind of reading textbooks and making sure I had some idea because you don't really want to spend the whole year just um, learning the things that you're going to have to teach. It's great if you kind of know most of what you're going to have to teach. Um, yeah. Lovely, thank you. Um, Joseph, it'd probably be a good time actually if you to speak to like some of the prep um, that now teach kind of helps with before starting. Yeah, absolutely. So um, prior to kind of starting teaching, you'll be put in touch with a member of the programme team and we'll um, kind of invite you to a series of events and we put on a load of content and we can kind of guide you depending on what it is specifically that you feel you need support with um but one thing that you you'll if you were to join now teach and you were to get a place starting in september you'd be invited to come along to our annual conference where we have a whole load of sessions which um are really tailored towards preparing you to the for the different aspects of working in a school not just teaching but kind of the um school culture and, and what that looks like along with that um Throughout the year, we run subject hubs as well, uh, specifically on subject knowledge, where we connect you with uh, experts in your subject to have kind of one to one, not one to one, but small group sessions with that subject expert. Um, and equally, kind of within that, we can connect you to other people who are teaching your subject, um, who are sort of quite forthcoming with sharing resources uh, and that type of thing. So it's kind of worth knowing that if you were to kind of make this career change and come through now teach then you would already be connected with a whole network of other teachers prior to kind of setting foot in the classroom on day one so a lot of those kind of questions or challenges that might come up you'll have other people who have recently been through it or are currently training to to talk to about that kind of thing yeah perfect and we've had another question actually Joseph which links quite nicely and it's about kind of the timeline then after you've started um so you know what what's the timeline from the start assuming you kind of you don't you know you don't have any kind of teaching qualifications um so from the start to being qualified and kind of what are the high level steps that um but all trainees go through I suppose but um just specifically for our teachers as well yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're on a full time route, you will be qualified within that academic year uh, in kind of 99 percent of cases that occasionally people will extend their um, completion of QTS by a few weeks or by a half term. Um, but those are quite rare instances. And generally, that's just the school exercising some flexibility for personal circumstances, whatever it might be that comes up. Um, so that's the main timeline. If you're on a part time course, then you're kind of looking at two years uh, with a lot of part time courses. What tends to happen is that 
um, regardless if you, if you do PGCE through a university or if you do a schools based route, you will have um, you will have sessions where you have sort of lecture style sessions, seminar style sessions, learning that happens outside of the school. Often on the part time courses, you'll find that that's just concentrated to one year um, and you'll follow the same trajectory of that content, but your placements will be more spread out. Um, so you're spending less time total. But again, there are different structures depending on who your training provider is. Um, but again, that's something that our career change specialists know a lot about uh, in terms of the structure of different training routes. And we'll be able to advise you on kind of what the best fit is there for you. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the thing. It's like there's so many kind of moving parts to all these different routes. Um, it's really good to just talk through kind of what your expectations are and also, you know, um we'll have insight as well on kind of the different training providers and kind of like what that looks like and um additionally um you know we do have that kind of breadth of experience in our network people like warren um and loads of other people as well who've just who had got experience with different training providers too so it's definitely worth um tapping into so someone's also asked i just wanted to answer this one really quickly about um, now teachers fees um, so I can see that Warren's answered it but I just wanted to say um, to kind of everyone and uh, now teach doesn't have fees um, we are a charity um, so um, you don't pay anything to kind of access um, uh, well the program or the kind of help at recruitment stage either so um, please don't let that um, be a barrier or put you off um, so we are kind of funded um, by the DfE. So um, yeah, just wanted to make sure that that was really clear um, and provide some clarity on that. So um, quite a few different things coming through, um, but I also um, just wanted to we always get a couple of things and kind of time commitment. So um, like uh, specifically, uh, we're going to ask about uh, the now teach time commitment as well. So, uh, what the expectations are, um, if there are any, um, on um, those that are in the network, um, and um, you know, kind of what that looks like. Um, so, uh, Joseph, I think if you could kick us off on that, and then Warren, I'll go to you um, about kind of how you found it also, and how you've um, kind of managed it around your school workload and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So from the now to each side, we make a real conscious effort to make all of our content as accessible as possible. So this year, um, we run most of our, so for example, if we've got an expert speaker coming in, we will tend to run that session online so that people can access it regardless of where they are. And we'll record it um, so that if you can't attend on the evening or whatever time of day it happens to be, you can access the content at a later date. Um, that said, we do definitely recognise the value of the kind of social connection that you form as part of a network of career changes. Um, and so we are also making efforts to kind of return to more in-person events as well and getting people together in the same room to kind of have those really great conversations and be able to share um, their experience also. But in terms of the time commitment, we're totally aware of how busy the training year is. Um, you know, it, it now teachers' support is additional. It's not a requirement for um, for passing your course or anything like that. Um, but you know, all of our events generally uh, are very highly regarded. Um, people see mm -hmm. them as very useful. So, uh, yeah, whilst we do try and make them as accessible as possible and that kind of thing. There's a small time commitment to to come along to that to access um, what's on offer, but as we say, you know, we're not. It, it's not uh, intended to be an additional drain on your time, and we're very conscious yeah. of how it can get. That's great, uh, Warren. I wonder if you've got anything you want to add to that. Um, no, only that it was never uh, onerous. It was only ever a wonderful additional resource that I could access when I had time, inclination, space, um, interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And Warren, I just wanted to so say, I saw that um, a really nice question through, in which I think he did answer kind of, um, on the Q and A box, but I just I think it might be just a nice one to speak to, kind of in the group as well. And it's about um, 
you know, how you found going in as a mature person and, and as a mature student um, into schools, like how you found that and were people welcoming? Um, and did you feel like it mattered, I suppose? Uh, no, I, I mean, I don't really feel like an old person, but I obviously am getting to that stage. Um, and schools, uh, like you have to be a little bit young at heart in any school. Um, I don't think you can be properly... Um, I don't know. Uh, let's not let's not rule against anybody. Uh, maybe you could cope, uh, but um, there are the, the the whole spectrum. Like I was training. Well, uh, somebody was uh, in my first year of ECT. Uh, somebody came in as a PGC who had come straight from university and straight from the school. Uh, so was only at like three or four years older and looks the same age as some of the sixth formers there. So there's that. Mm. But then there were, at the same time as me, uh, another ECT uh, trainee, another first year, only just qualified, who was like two years older than me, and we were both going in to do exactly the same thing. So there's, yeah, the, everything is represented. Um, so I said on the, the, the text, uh, lots of the older people in a school will have got to senior roles so it can be useful that those people you're you have more in common with um, sometimes the students will take you a little bit more seriously or, or expect that just assume that you are a qualified person because you're older uh, so that can make it a bit easier there aren't really any um negatives to being an older uh, person coming into school uh, except that it is sometimes tiring so <laughs> you could, that could be tough yeah I'm sure, yeah um that kind of uh, kind of links on actually so someone's asked a bit about workload um during the teacher training year they've asked um it's kind of two parts of the question but I think let's focus in on that one it'd just be good to know you know what you thought about it. Um, there's a lot in the press about uh, teacher workload being really high um, and I'm sure people's experiences are variable, but it'd just be interesting to know like how you found it personally. Uh, so there's two separate bits to that. Let's talk about just the training year. So yeah. people kind of told me that that was gonna be the, the most I'd ever work at any time or the hardest I'd ever work, but no. Um, for me, and I think for a lot of people, it's, so it's, it's difficult. You, you're, you're getting a mix of things because you've got to do the essays and you've got to fulfill these academic criteria. Um, but the workload usually only, uh, the teaching workload usually only builds up at the rate that you're happy to have it build up. You're supposed to be teaching right at the end like in in may or uh, april um ten to possibly up to 15 hours a week but you're not really expected to and it's okay if you're still only at 10 hours um a week which is um definitely usually doable by then uh and to start off with you might only be teaching one or two hours uh a week and some some people don't even really start teaching um any classes properly until quite late um almost just before christmas um i chose to get in quickly but then didn't build it up that much just had one or two one main class um because it's mass i'm seeing them like three or four times a week yeah um yeah uh, I so I still did end up not having proper holidays and breaks like I was writing essays in holidays I was only having like mm -hmm. maybe four days off at Christmas rather than like the whole two weeks or whatever yeah. and using the rest to actually be either lesson planning or doing the the academic um, expectations Perfect, thank you. And someone's also asked, you know, are you happy being a teacher? Um, do you have ambitions for professional development? I mean, you know, are you looking to be kind of ahead of subjects, head of year, um, or kind of, you know, a head teacher, something like that? No. Um, 
so I care about the teaching. Um, I think that's how I can make the most difference. Yeah. Um, so I have, like, I've got some alternative ideas and uh, have talked or thought about uh, opening a school in the past. And uh, if that, I don't know how that would actually work now because I've seen some people try and do it and it's incredibly difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was reading about him in our teach thing, somebody who was like, my plan was to be a head teacher. And three years later or four years later, I was a head teacher. Uh, because yeah. he thought that was how he could make the biggest yeah. difference in the structures and everything. Um, I don't know. I think the people that make the real, the most difference are the people standing in front of the children and doing the teaching um, currently. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we've had a question too, um, and I, I think I can speak to this one. Um, so I'm at the point of applying through a skit that I've researched locally. If I proceed with that now, can I still become part of the Now Teach cohort? Would I need to apply to you first? Um, no, please still apply to us and also apply to the skit that you've researched locally. Um, both things are fine. Um, the program doesn't actually kind of officially start, I suppose, until you are um both on our program and um you have a training place um if those things happen slightly out of order that's that's complete that's completely fine um we just want to kind of emphasize that we can help to place people too um but you'll definitely still benefit from the program which uh, joseph's spoken about kind of after um you've kind of got that bit at the start where you're kind of applying to us and to um, the training provider is like such a short short amount of time in reality compared to kind of like the rest of your teaching career um, that kind of the order that happens in is kind of that doesn't really matter um, the thing that matters is then that you are able to access the program afterwards and um, we are here to support all career changes so um, yeah, so um, we just really want everyone to be able to access the support if they need to. Um, and if you're kind of happy uh, with the skit that you found in your local area, there's absolutely, we, we would definitely encourage you to sort of apply straight away and kind of start getting the ball rolling because um, places go um, and you want to make sure that you get the place that you want. So um, don't worry too much about that. Um, but if you do have any kind of further questions on that, then you can just jump on and fill in the form on the website and we can chat to you a bit more about it. Um, and equally, if you, you've researched the skit locally, um, but actually you'd like to know if there's more options, we can talk to you about that too. Um, so there's um, definitely sort of um, ways kind of around that. Um, so we're kind of coming like to the end. Oh, so someone's just popped up with another question there. So I think we've probably got time for uh, this one. I think it's specifically for you, Warren, but Joseph would be really interested to hear if you've kind of got any anecdotes or anything um, um, from like other now teachers. So um, so someone's asked, I think you mentioned you have a family, uh, Warren, I think this one's for you. Um, how did you manage family life? got uh, three young boys uh, and a wife and how can I get through QTS in one piece any lessons advice mistakes that, that uh, you learned from okay because I had a bit of choice with who I was training with um, I was able to choose a provider that was a cycle right away and then a main school uh, placement that was also a short cycle right away that meant that an hour or two less was being taken from my day and I could still for instance take my daughter to school um, occasionally I could collect her not often um, and the the one the training day was usually shorter uh, so that made it more possible. It would be hard to be a main carer for even one child and do the training year. Um, but for that, you could consider the two year so that you've got a bit more time and flexibility. Um, but there's a, a huge variation in, in the training providers. So uh, if that's important to you, then talk to them about how uh, you're going to be able to fit what's important to you around what you're going to have to do. 
Perfect. Thank you. Joseph? Yeah, and I think just to kind of reassure you as well that a, a, a large amount of our now teachers are parents um, at different stages of that, I will add, you know, um, not necessarily... Uh, uh, there's a, a good chunk of our cohort who are kind of parents to adult children as well, but um, there are plenty of people who have gone through teacher training as parents. I think that it's worth bearing in mind that it, it's a full-time commitment if you're doing it full-time, and there is not a lot of flexibility around not being in school um, during, you know, it's not a job you can do from home basically so you know you do need to be able to commit the time to being uh, at school for those placements but um kind of as warren's alluded to there there's occasionally some flexibility around uh, especially those training days um and do again just talk through what your options are because actually um being somewhere local can make a huge difference um and just considering what's what's out there in your area so that you can prioritize that but um yeah it is absolutely uh it's a full-time commitment if you're working full-time towards that training mm -hmm. all right thank you very much um so i think we're looking to kind of uh, wrap up there because we're starting to come quite close to time um You'll see now though um, there's a poll that will pop up on your screen. Um, so if you can complete that, um, and I'll just reiterate, um, whilst you do that, that our specialist team really are here to help. Um, so we will be following up with a call with everyone um, following the webinar. So um, do you have any further questions ready, um, especially anything you didn't get a chance to ask or, or anything that's a bit more specific to your circumstance? Um, and you can uh, draw upon their extensive knowledge um, and then fill in our registration form on the website if you've not done that already and we can go from there. So lastly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that you found it informative um, and I'm sure it was uh, great to hear from Joseph and Warren, whose first hand experience really invaluable. And um, thanks to both of you um, on the panel as well for joining us. Um, it's been great. So thanks very much and have a good rest of your evening. <laughs>